Sure. Hi guys, thank you for uh, joining me. Uh, my name is Itai Bogner, I'm the founder and CEO of Stratoscale. Uh, for those of you who attended my session yesterday, it's going to be not the same, but you won't learn anything new. So uh, if you uh, s have seen that, I'll spare you the time. Um, I'm going to use my Apple Watch to make progress with the slides. I'm not sure it's going to work. It doesn't. I see. Okay. Anyway, um, Stratoscale is a software company. We are uh, in the emerging segment of the hyper-converged uh, data center architecture market. Uh, we are targeting enterprises and ISPs. We raised $42 million from uh, Intel, Cisco, SanDisk, Bessemer, and Battery. We are about 60 people in the country, in the, in the company, I'm sorry. Uh, we are based, uh, R&D is based in Israel, and we have a footprint in the States sales and marketing primarily. Um, so, as I mentioned, we are in the hyper-converged uh, 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 infrastructure space. Uh, what we're building is a software stack that allows you to build your own cloud based on a hyper-converged infrastructure. So, hyper-converged infrastructure is the future of uh, data center architectures. So, instead of having a split infrastructure where you have a, a separate storage uh, including fabric and a separate compute infrastructure, we are using server-side storage and we expose all the resources in, the, in, a, in a cluster of servers externally for your per user. Um, we are managing, uh, we have our own software uh, storage stack, we have our own hypervisor based on KVM, and we are managing the interconnect holistically. The problem with hyperconvergence is that you have the storage subsystem residing on the same server as the compute, as workloads running. That creates interference. They are, both subsystems are competing for the same physical resources on every server. And what we are about, uh, what we are all about, is managing that interference, solving contention problems, and creating a very efficient and scalable infrastructure uh, and very cost efficient because we are using uh, uh, commodity hardware and local, uh, directly attached storage inside the servers. Our software stack is comprised out of three building blocks, the distributed storage, the uh, modified KVM hypervisor, and our uh, networking stack that is managing the interconnect. We are more, the, the reason we have those uh, three uh, subsystems is that we, have, we need to have very fine grain control on what's happening inside each of the subsystems in order to manage the interference and solve contention problems. On top of that, we have an analytics layer, which is collecting runtime insights on everything that's happening inside the cluster. Using those insights, we are able to do cluster-wide load balancing and deliver a, a highly efficient data center uh, to your, uh, for, for the workloads to be using. In terms of uh, uh, workloads, we are able to run any type of VM, Windows and Linux. We are able to run containers. We are scaling uh, to uh, uh, thousands of nodes. There's no scaling problems with what we are doing. Basically, the only scaling limitation is the network topology because today you can build racks of servers and they are inside every rack you have a 10 gig E interconnect and it's in a mesh topology using a non-blocking switch and then we know how to daisy chain those racks into a very large data center. In terms of the storage, we are able to store everything. So we developed our own distributed storage. You do not need to manage loons. You don't need to have a storage admin. We are exposing a block storage device to the workloads. And out of that, you can carve out volumes for the workloads to be using. Uh, the storage is obviously reliable. It's uh, uh, fully distributed and it's highly available. Everything is included inside our solution. Um, in terms of the APIs we are exposing to you, we are exposing 
a cloud-like API. So uh, OpenStack APIs that you are familiar with, you can continue to use and build your own orchestration layer on top of our infrastructure. So if you have any business logic you implemented as scripts using OpenStack APIs to start instances, to stop instances, to connect them, you can continue to use that on top of our uh, infrastructure. We expose rich analytics. So again, you can embed that part, that log uh, the, the analytics and use that as part of your logic if you are creating your own orchestration uh, uh, management system. We are uh, allowing you to set SLAs per workload and policies. And using that, we are able to load balance the cluster and meet those SLA requirements. So we are making sure that workloads do not uh, interfere with each other and they meet your uh, uh, SLAs as you define them in the system in terms of performance, storage, uh, uh, IOPS, networking uh, bandwidth, etc. Uh, at a very high level, what are the benefits of the system? So for CIOs, okay, you get a, a fully distributed system. It's, there's no single point of failure. Uh, it's a single infrastructure to serve all of your data center needs. You can run any workload on top of, of our uh, infrastructure. It scales to uh, uh, thousands of services, as I said. For developers and architects, you get an abstraction from the architecture of the infrastructure. You don't need to define loons and uh, use a storage admin to carve out storage. You don't need to have a VM admin to uh, uh, create VMs. Everything is program uh, programmable. We are developer friendly. And uh, uh, we, we like to think of what we're doing as a, a platform as a service on uh, as steroids up until the uh, OpenStack API level. So you get the uh, past simplicity with uh, the flexibility of uh, an infrastructure as a service. Oh, just a second. It jumped too many slides. Uh, in terms of... Something happened and I, it doesn't show my uh, slides. Let me see. Okay, sorry about that. So in terms of the system, the system is fully distributed. Okay, oh, I talked about that, I'm sorry. <laughs> in terms of efficiency, so we allow, our system allows you to, to uh, get out uh, the, the, a, a very efficient system out of your existing hardware. Okay, so we know how to make, create a very dense data center, much more denser with current solutions. We are enabling you to use commodity hardware. There's no need to use a, a brand name a servers. And as a software layer on top of the hardware, we are compensating for the higher failure rates of commodity hardware. So if a nose go, nose go down, we know how to reroute traffic, we know how to use other replicas of the storage system, and this allows you to save even more money by using commodity hardware. I mentioned SLAs before, and part of the reason we are very keen on having SLAs is that that, that helps us uh, optimizing uh, runtime uh, characteristics of the workloads per the SLA is defined by you, the users. So this helps us load balancing the entire clusters. We do live migration of VMs. We know how to throttle uh, networking, and we know how to use uh, optimized distributed storage and reroute uh, IOPS to the correct nodes inside the cluster. Uh, to conclude, uh, we are taking an holistic approach to infrastructure. We look at the resource utilization across the cluster of servers. We are looking at storage, compute, and the networking. We are the only company who has built a vertically integrated solution, measuring everything that is happening inside the cluster. And the result of that is that we are able to load balance the cluster and deliver a very highly efficient data center for you to use. We allow application architects to plan the way their applications are working because our infrastructure is predictable. Because we adhere to the SLAs that you define. 
And predictability is a very important uh, aspect of the system. If you are familiar with the noisy neighbor problem, let's say in Amazon, you are deploying, creating a VM, you have no idea near which other VM you are going to be executing, executing and how that other VM is going to impact the performance of your VM. In our system, because we are load balancing the cluster all the time, we are preventing the no noisy neighbor problem and we are, uh, it depends on, on the policies, we can throttle the performance of the noisy neighbor, we don't allow him to use more bandwidth that is allowed, so on and so forth. All this requires very fine-grained control of all aspects of the system, storage, compute, and networking. Um, and the last slide, again, hyper-converged infrastructure is the next generation architecture of data centers. In my opinion, it's going to be the dominant architecture for, for data centers because it delivers a very cost-efficient infrastructure, high-performant infrastructure, and reliability. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you.